we can define the average velocity as the change in position or displacement on the change in time. And that can be seen between two points on the position time curve. Now if we take the limit as delta t approaches zero, we obtain the instantaneous velocity. So you can see that the instantaneous velocity is the slope of the tangent to the position time curve at a particular time. And the velocity is a vector which also has a length and a direction. So when the particle travels from x0 to x1, we can see that the velocity is positive. And at x1, the particle changes direction. So the velocity becomes zero, which is also the slope of the tangent to the position time curve. And from x1 to x2, the slope of the tangent to the curve is negative, meaning that the velocity is negative and the particle is traveling to the left. Now another quantity to define is speed, which is a magnitude of the instantaneous velocity. So speed is a scalar, whereas velocity is a vector. So you can imagine reading the speed of the speedometer of your car. It has no direction, but just a number.